Welcome to the Post Racing Podcast with Ron Robinson and Sean Trabass. Post Racing, the site for winners. Good afternoon, Sean. How the devil are you, sir? I'm okay. Back in the cold of the United Kingdom after sitting down in a basement for about a week. In, in, in It might have been sunny Spain. I don't know. I was in a basement. Um, <laughs> but writing some books. I don't, I'm just going to do a bit of a plug for myself here. There'll be some new books coming out in the next couple of weeks, including one that's showing over 200 points profit in 10 months on the all-weather only. How's that for you? Uh, all weather is where it's at at the moment, I'm telling you. I hate yeah. the stuff. Everybody knows that. But you know you've the, got to look at the ohms. Well, look at the ohms and then add the old theory when it first came out that, that everyone seems to have forgotten, and that is that generally, generally speaking, the surface is the same. You, oh, yeah, yeah. I know it's not exactly the same. We all know that no, for anybody who no. writes in and tells you. But, it can, it can uh, be manufactured. It can, but I prefer the going description of standard to some of the going descriptions we get on the grass, which should be described as soft, laughable in places. <laughs> um, as you and, I, you and I both know, that, and have been for years, the going descriptions were a disaster zone. Not always, but sometimes, and they make no sense whatsoever. I'm still trying to work out the fact that last week's Cheltenham trials motor was on good to soft which is you know fairly quick by racing ground standards most races were coming in at 16 to 25 seconds slower than average go yeah. work yeah I know. yeah but that, that's that's an argument for another day but yeah i think the all weathers at least the going and there's a limited amount of tracks limited amount of horses and, and a roughly the same going i think there's more consistency there albeit in the donkey in the donkey top <laughs> for want of a better way of putting it than, than there is elsewhere <laughs> Never mind. No, what are we talking about this week? So. Loads, didn't we? Loads. Oh, oh you well, you've given me six six topics. <laughs> oh God! Do you know what I, mean? I, I must have been carrying away. I must have been drinking that day, yeah, or every day. Uh, first one. Let's go with that one. Yeah, go for Irish it. Dominance. Irish mm. dominance in the national home game. What can us Brits do to redress the balance? Well, yeah. in a nutshell, absolutely nothing. There, you are. that's me, short and sweet. No, seriously, the, the situation in Ireland is different to what we have here. And it was pointed, I didn't know this, it was pointed out to me by a Facebook friend not so long ago that what happens in Ireland is it's treated, racing is treated in the same way as agri- agriculture. And so they get all the, the tax breaks and tax allowances and, and it doesn't cost anything like as much over there to run our stables as it does in the UK. And so, obviously, that's why we've seen lots of bigger trainers, uh, lots of bigger owners, sorry, moving their horses over to Ireland. Now, not only is it cheaper to have a, ha- a horse over there, but the prize money is also better. And the, the, the way that will be working, obviously, is you know, they don't race as often as we do. They haven't got to spread that kitty anything like as much. Uh, and the buying power is also based in Ireland all the big owners, remember the big owners that Paul Nichols used to have? Yep. Where have they gone? <sighs> Probably got skint like the rest of us. Um, <laughs> I think no, you're they, right. They, they've, all, they've all got out the game. They've gone gone to live in Barbados and, yeah. and that's the end of it. You know, they, they, they're not interested anymore because it's just too expensive to train a horse in this country and run for the lousy prize money that you're actually being asked to run for. That was interesting, an interesting com- uh, statement you made there that I don't know about, and that is the training. Of, I'd be interested to see how much Willie Mullins charges per month to train a horse as opposed to how much Paul Nichols charges. Now, that wouldn't mm-hmm. be an indictment on Paul because I don't know what the cost of buying the original stables would be in Ireland compared to buying one here. And then, the you know, repay- assuming it's on a mortgage, in many cases, it sure. would be repaying your mortgage over there compared to repaying your mortgage over here. How much the yeah, stable yeah. staff get paid there? How much the stable staff get paid here? It, it's a big accountant's conundrum. There, there is plenty of things that can be done. Whether anyone has the, uh, I'm going to use the word, are we after the watershed? Uh, whether anyone has the balls to do that is another matter. Uh, and you start with um, charging them entry fees to come over here that are higher than the entry fees for the local trained horses, mm. um, if necessary. I'm not suggesting that's an answer. I'm saying it's something you could do. You could look at half the horses they're buying, they're buying from here and taking them back out. They will put some kind of export tax on it then. I don't know. Something sounds like I'm anti the Irish horses and it's not that at all. We all want to see the best horses compete against each other. But the balance has just gone a little bit too far now and someone needs to be looking at doing something to change it. Now, 
I, I would be shocked or horrified, actually, if the BHA haven't approached governments, plural, over the last few years and said, why can't we have this agricultural thing for horse racing that Ireland's got? We're being, if, it's not a state subsidy, but it's, it's, it's the equivalent of, isn't it? Oh, it is. And, and those, yeah. aren't, those aren't allowed. So if they can, in inverted commas, so I don't get sued, state subsidise their racing, why can't we do the same thing? Now, whether yeah. there's any interest in that in the government, I would question whether there is, being honest with you. And at this moment in time, which is coming later, as it always is, um, affordability checks and gathering at review being seen to be in favour of racing is not is, is political suicide because everybody seems to be out to get us, or that's how it feels sometimes. Mm, so yeah. it's probably not the best time to do it. But they need to look at, well, what, what can we do? How do we attract the owners back here, I suppose, is number one. Instead of how do we get, how do we punish the ones that are over there? How do we attract them back over here? You've yeah. got Tony Bloom, who owns Brighton, uh, Brighton Football Club, and obviously a lot of other business, I would guess. Mm. Most of the horses are over in Ireland. Well, why is that? It yeah. must be for financial reasons. Exactly. Yeah, why would he want to have his horses? Okay, they may well turn up at Cheltenham, but why would he want to have to zip off to Dublin to go watch the horses running if he doesn't when they could be running at Sandown instead? And, and there has to be a financial reason. Has anybody asked him? I, I wish I had a guess that no, and they oh, should. Guarantee it's prize money. Mm, but but you need to go exactly what it's, pri what it's prize money, but prize money as a ratio to costs. Now, mm -hmm. if we can't improve the prize money, which we would struggle with at this moment, then at the very least we need to try and reduce the costs. Yeah. How you do that is, is for someone a lot cleverer than me, which is most of the population I accept. But <laughs> it's the fact that I don't trust anyone to actually be looking into it. No. That, that's, that's what bothers me the most. Someone needs to be asking him why and, and other people like him. Why are, you, why, why are you getting a horse and sending it all the way over to Ireland when you could train it here? And if the answer is, well, because Willie Mullins is £2,000 a month and blah, blah, blah is £3,000 a month. Well, then we need to look at that somehow, don't we? Uh, and see what the answers are. Um, but it's the it's, same with... Who was the guy that owns Plumpton Racecourse? I've forgotten his name now. Savile, Peter Savile. Well, he owns that racecourse. And when they said to him, so why are all your horses trained in Ireland and France? He said straight away, prize money. I'm, I'm sure you're right, but it has to be as a comparison. If you, if you could train a horse over here for nothing, then the prize money wouldn't feel quite so bad. It's the fact that you're spending 28,000 a year to train your horse that suddenly the prize money becomes so much worse. So there's... There's a compromise to be made somewhere. I don't know. No, no one ever, and this will get me shot down. I won't be doing any interviews for a while, will I? Um, no one that I know has ever asked how much profit trainers are making each year. Have you ever seen those figures anywhere? No, but I can imagine, and I would imagine, the majority are making a loss. Very, very possibly. But it would be nice to know why um, no one's asked that figure. It's all part of the calculations as to where money is leaking out of the sport, if it's leaking at all. And they're entitled to make a profit if they if they can. Good on them. I'm not I'm not suggesting they should do it for nothing as a hobby, but someone needs to look and go. Well, actually, you know, maybe you if you dropped your train if you dropped your training fees by two thousand pound, and we did this with the VAT for agriculture, we could then put prize money up by two thousand pound a race, and that would make things a lot more balanced than it is now. Would we ever get to where Ireland is? No, because we've got too well. We've had this argument. We've got too many race courses and too much racing. If they're running. Yeah three times a week, then they're going to get fuller fields. People are, yeah, you know, I, imagine you and I, Ron, we, we haven't, we haven't been a drug addict, and we've been on cold turkey for three days because there's no, <laughs> there's no racing. There's no tell you what, I, what I could do in that time yeah. is really break into these handicaps and, and get them done as I'd really like to get them done. Mm. What, what I do at the moment is I, I can basically handicap a race in about 30 minutes, right? And that, that, that's because I've been doing it now for 20 odd years and yep. I know exactly what I'm looking for. But then I'd love to be able to dig a bit deeper. If, if you have a read of the scribblings that I'm attaching to the races that I, I work do, on now, do. Do sometimes. Yep. you will see that I'm saying, like, like today, there was one, a top rated horse, um, King's Fortune, I think it was called, or King something. Yep. And I basically told you why the horse couldn't win. Yeah. It was zero for five on the ground. Zero from four on the track, zero from seven at the trip, and it got beat. It went off two to one favourites, it got beat. Now, I'd love to be able to do that for every horse in every race. Yeah, and yeah, say, yeah. this horse can't win because, and that horse could win because. And it, it, it all matters, and I'd love to be able to have the time to do that. It'd be great. 
I think I think the problem is that what you've got is that for you and I, purists or old fashioned, whatever you want to call it, the anticipation and the anticipation would build when there's no days without racing for when there is racing. And you know that mm. race is competitive because trainers have had to target their horses there because they've had no other options. But we've now got two, three meetings a day, every single day, uh, yeah. into the sausage machine one end, out of the sausage machine the other end, and we go again tomorrow. Um, it, there are days when it can feel like that. You must you must find that. There's other, other well, days when you get all excited. Well, and I, 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 I call it slot machine racing now because mm. you've got to race every two, three. It's doom, 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 doom. And it's, it's like from midday right until 8.30 of an evening. And through the summer, it's going to be bedlam, isn't it? But bedlam. The, the problem with that is, uh, what, what do you do, though? Do you just shut down these courses? I mean, you know, there may be people listening here who work at uh, Fakenham, for of an argument. Work at Fakenham, that's their full-time job. That, that's their income. That's how they pay their mortgage. And there's you and I going, ah, just shut Fakenham down. That's what's good for horse racing. But well, the thing um, is... Not that simple, is it? That's what I'm saying. No, but, but the thing is, say you've got 10 shops on a street... And they're all selling the same stuff. Yeah. Some of those shops are going to go out of business. It, 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 you're, you're not wrong, but it's difficult for us to, to say these these should go and these should stay. And I think racing needs a, a, a massive, massive oval. Cheltenham, for me, is the, 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 all these things. I might even be going on to the second one after the Irish, and they all sort of lead into yeah, each yeah. other. Together. Cheltenham is the be-all and end-all. It's become too much the be-all and end-all now. Now, if you haven't got a horse that's like, uh, we're talking National Hunt, obviously, or I am anyway. Yep. Um, if you haven't got a horse that's going Cheltenham or, or possibly Aintree, then you've got very little chance of breaking even. You've got mm. £350,000 for the winner of the Gold Cup, £253,000 for the winner of the Champion Hurdle. But when yeah. I wrote this Thursday afternoon, 315 I just picked on a race, 5000 quid to the winner. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, the differential is massive. Okay, it's a totally different race. It's a totally different class, and we all want to see the best horses at China. But it become such a be all and end all that the the rest of it can, cannot be funded appropriately. While the likes of Cheltenham and Aintree are pumping in that kind of cash, and, and rightly so, because Cheltenham is always full. Brilliant meeting, and I, I don't know if I'm going this year. But I might do because it is brilliant to go to. But it seems to be killing everything else. Uh, Ron and I were talking before we got on air that. This is my idea, and, and others, it's not just me. But you, you shouldn't be allowed to go to the Cheltenham Gold Cup unless you run in any two of these five, not trials, just races that you have to run in before you're allowed to go to the Cheltenham Gold Cup because it will stop horses being held back to only go one race Gold Cup, end of season, yeah. one race Gold Cup, end of season. And you can add, we, we all know we can add champion hurdling to that with Constitution Hill and the yeah. flat Nicky Henderson's got. Now, he has to do what's best for the horse, but if the rules of racing were changed, then suddenly what's best for the horse and the owner becomes slightly different. Um, and you, you reset the entire pattern plan for jumps racing accordingly and spread out certain races that would suit these horses to get them onto the course. Because they're not out there now. There's nothing to see, is there? Nothing to see here. It's not Cheltenham, pretty much. Scary well, another, another, another problem is there's too many grade one races, especially in Ireland. Hmm. And so the, the likes of Willie Mullins, what, what they can do is they can say, right, well, we'll target this horse at that race and this horse at that race. When, in fact, if one of those two races was a grade two, the owner of the one that's been targeted at the grade two might say, well, I'd prefer to actually go for that grade one. And he'd have to run those horses against each other. And the, the, the same situation you're going to arise, we're going to be talking about lossy mouth. Mm -hmm. Well, we could do it now, if you like, because it feeds right in. What a segue that, that was. Lossy Mouth is going to go for the Mayor's Hurdle. Of course. Rather than the Champion Hurdle. Absolutely. Um, for which, if if he lined, if she lined up in the Champion Hurdle, right now she'd be second favourite to win it. Mm -hmm. But because that's a grade one race, the Mayor's Hurdle, they're going to go for that instead. Yeah. Now, if they made that a grade two and lowered the prize money for it, would the owner of Lossy Mouth then be saying, I think we should take on Constitution Hill? You're probably going to get as much for coming second as you would do for winning the um, the mayor's the mayor's hurdle. So go do something like that. Lower lower the grades of certain races. Lower the prize money, yeah. and give these trainers fewer targets to aim at. You need encouragement to take each other on. Oh, I've written down. I did look at Lossy Math, but at the end of the day, why would you take on Constitution Hill? She's got absolutely no chance, none at all. Well, so, that's but, but something has got to finish second, and the prize money. I don't know. I can't off the top of my head. I don't know what the prize money is. No, coming second in the champion hurdle, or 
winning a grade two Mayor's novice uh, Mayor's hurdle? I'm not sure myself. I'm trying to have a quick flick and look if I can. Yeah. Do, do, do. Oh, 95, yeah. 95,400 for second in the champion hurdle. That's the only two. one I can tell you at the moment. Yeah, I mean, she's, she's right. she beat Love Envoy, who's rated 151 by nine lengths, which puts on about yeah. 160. Constitution does on 175 and still improving. She'd get, I think she yeah. gets three pound as a mare. So she's still yeah. got, she'd have close to a stone to find being realistic. Um, Yep. I'm not, I'm the owner, big, yeah, the owner would want to give it a shot because the prize money is better for coming. Is, yeah, actually, you're right. I've managed to managed to flick through because you can tell me we haven't planned this. Uh, Sixty-seven thousand five hundred twenty-four pounds for winning the mayor's hurdle, yeah, for, which is currently four to five, and mm -hmm. she get ninety-five for finishing second to Constitution. I assume, uh, rightly or wrongly, from a breeding perspective, I know very little about national hunt breeding. If I'm honest yeah. with you, she'd actually get yeah she get forty seven thousand if she was third in the champion hill. You would imagine yeah. that having a grade one victory to your name, as opposed yeah. to a grade one second, would mm -hmm. increase her value as a broodmare. But but there's not that much money involved in it really, not compared to the flat stallions and things like that. No, no, but no, you, no, you think it'd be no. worth the bother to be honest with you? She can only mm -hmm. produce she can only produce one a year, and unlike the stallions, so I wouldn't think the money in the breeding well, is all what that. Would you important. like to see the race? Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you rather see Lossy Mouth having a pop at Constitution Hill than going for the mayor's hurdle? Which, by the way, she's in no, no, no way guaranteed to win that. You know, because no. um, one of our members, Ian, pointed out a stat to me. Um, I've forgotten what it was now, but I, I then fired back with one at him that also negates her chance, and that's mm -hmm. that she's a five-year-old. I think there's only one five-year-old won it in the last ten years. Now she might be so far ahead of anything in that division uh, compared to any of the other girls that are around at the moment but the stats yeah. say you, you wouldn't take odds on you just wouldn't looking at the betting for that race at a glance you've got a mullins one second favorite at fours astro diamond funnily enough there's a mullins one third favorite gala moss so mullins echoes in rain full favorite 14 to one jessica harrington fifth favorite jatara 14 to one Next one, mm. also 14 to 1, Harry for Eyes Love Envoy, which we'd all love to see yeah. when it's Harry's. However, snowball charts in what name, really, on, on the form of, yeah. of last Saturday. So, I've yeah. Found, I've found the in stat. Yeah. She, 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 she's the American chart. Yeah. 58 horses have lined up in that race, right? Mm. Having yet to win over two miles, four furlongs or further, and only one has managed to pull it off. Wow. From 58 Interesting. horses. Interesting. Uh, I, I, I can't see it being beaten. My, my concern with it, I, I remember historically talking to trainers over the years, and the triumph hurdle off, often finishes a horse. Um, in her oh, case, yeah, yeah, yeah. clearly not, by the way she strolled down last time. Well, well, not only that, but she was busy last year as well. She must be as tough as teeth. Mm, I'd be wary of four to five. I can't really oppose her either. No, um, no. It's, it's a difficult one. We just want... As a punter, you know, we're, we're racing fans, but we also like to have a bet now and again. And it's a case of what do you do? Because they, they, they're just so uncompetitive. Like you pointed out to me, Ron, in, in far more detail than I've got here, that um, the, the top sort of top five in nearly every buddy race are Mullins yeah. trained or Irish trained. Mullins trained. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, it, it, you've only got to be you've only got to look back at past results. I think he trained the first four home in the Triumph Hurdle last year. Yeah. You know, it's it's bonkers, bonkers. But where's the thing? You know, it's good to watch. It's like, you know, we all like watching, I don't know, the great Barcelona team playing football. But um, from a betting perspective, you knew they were going to win. What was the point? You didn't have a bet. You just watched the football. Um, and, and that'll be the same with a lot of races at Cheltenham. You're not going to bother having a bet on one to three Constitution Hill. But hey, I'll watch the race, I suppose. But, but it loses a bit of its spice if you haven't got a financial interest in it. And, and that's how it is. Now, that also leads on, before I get too confused with my writing here, that the falling attendances are being reported for all national hunt last year. Yep. Um, well, they're, they're right across the board, you know. I no, was reading an article. Black was up, but not national hunt. Yep. I was, I was reading an article the other day um, about attendances, and not just in this country, yeah. but down in Japan as well. Yeah, that, yeah, well, yeah that's, I know the people who wrote that, and I know where they got their figures from, but yeah, fair enough. It, it, it's oh, not as figures, I, I don't know whether the figures are right or not, because... I haven't got time to go looking for these things. But um, if they're true, 
then racing per se is losing its flavour. And you, I noticed that, um, you yeah. know, you, you've said um, something about what can we do to change the dominance of Irish racing. Yeah. The next two days at, uh, in Ireland at the Dublin Racing Festival, mm -hmm. right? Fifty pound for a two-day ticket. You're going to see the Gold Cup winner there, the champion hurdler. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. champion hurdler. But these horses that are going for these big races at Cheltenham, they're mm -hmm. all going to be running at the Dublin Racing Festival, and you yeah. can go there for two days for fifty quid. Could yeah. you get in for one day at Cheltenham for fifty quid? No. Exactly. No. Um, I, I, I know, know, it's, it's, yeah. it's all to do with it. It's, it's too elitist in this country. Um, it's as simple as that. They're expecting people to turn up and pay two or three hundred quid for a bottle of champagne. And people will turn up and pay two or three hundred quid for a bottle of champagne that you can get for 50 quid in Tesco's or any other good supermarket. Um, but, there is, but therein lies your problem. If I can sell out a 30,000 crowd, whatever that number may be, uh, at, at 30 quid, why would I want to do it at 20 quid? But are they selling out? Cheltenham now, now are putting all sorts of offers up. Win really? this, win that. If yeah. you buy your ticket before the end of January, you were getting them at a discount and they're not selling them. I, I remember going back years when I used to buy a four day badge for um, a three day badge rather for entry. Mm -hmm. And you needed a letter from God to get one of those. Yeah, and every year I'd get my letter from Sir Peter O'Sullivan, it was at the time. He wrote to you and he said, don't forget to buy your badge. Mm -hmm. And so you made darn sure you bought your badge because they would never go on general sale. But now the screaming for people to go and buy a badge and not just a three day badge, a one day badge. It, you know, it, it's, there's something radically wrong at the moment. It's a terrible thing to say. Um, I'd like, it would almost be a good thing if Cheltenham didn't sell out this year. Even if it only gave enough weaponry to the likes of me and you to come back and go, <laughs> well, look, you need to you need to have another look. You can't just keep yeah. living on past glories. You no. need to have another look. Something is wrong somewhere. Why? Well, they, they need to be appealing to the likes of you yourself and, my, and, and me. Yeah. Say right. Well, it, okay, it's twenty five quid for the day. Do, do you know what? I'll go and I'll pay that. Yeah. But you, you look at it too. It's like it's like Anfield at the moment. Um, <laughs> I put I put something up on Facebook the other day about uh, how much people are being asked to pay for a ticket to sit behind Jurgen Klopp on his last day as, as Liverpool manager. Twenty five thousand quid. Yeah. Now obviously that's not Liverpool charging that price. But m my brother um, bought five tickets to take his two kids, well grown men now, and their, his grandchildren to Anfield mm -hmm. to watch Liverpool play Norwich in the FA Cup last weekend. Yeah, six hundred quid. Yep. But, but that, 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 if, if they can, that's the thing. I mean, it's, it's supply and demand. If they can, they're going yeah. to. Um, yeah. And that's it. I'm more begrudging on the £300 for a bottle of champagne because we all know they get over <laughs> on pass at, at 25 quid if they're lucky from, from somewhere yep. else. And, uh, and again, the question that always arises and always has done historically, who's making that money? Now, the person running the bar will be the one who takes the abuse for charging yeah. that price, but I know from other race courses, I can't talk for Cheltenham, um, that the race course then charges the hospitality company, for a better phrase, X thousand pound per day to be there, yeah, yeah. plus the percentage of their taking. So yeah. it's the race course is quite often forcing that price on the supply on the bar, who who then get the abuse for it, but they're not actually making they're, they're not buying it for twenty and selling it for, and getting three hundred. They're buying it for twenty, but then. They're then paying forty pound per head. Works out over the weekend for the amount of money they've had to pay to rent the bar for the week, and then they've yeah. got to give ten percent of all their takings back again. So it also can up and up and up and up, um, and they, they're forced into charging ridiculous sums of money. And that's that's something racing needs. Racing needs to look at making the day affordable. That's they, that's they, the bottom line. Yeah, they, they've got to because it's yeah. just getting completely out of hand at the moment. Well, it's, it's the entry fee. Plus the average price of a beer or a champagne, if that's your, if you can afford it. And a race plus, card. Yep, your race card. Uh, and, you know, your betting's up to you. That's your problem. I don't have any issues with yeah. that. That's entirely up to you. You don't have to bet if you don't want to. You can bet a tough at two quid a race, 22 quid a race. It's up to you. So I don't have a problem with that. But drink and food, entry fee and race card 
all need to be looked at. And is anyone actually asking the question or are the race courses just being allowed to continue to do whatever they want? Because that's how it feels. It, it's exactly how it feels. Yeah. Couldn't agree also, I, think, I also think that, that animal rights are being blamed quite a lot around the world uh, for reduced attendances in horse racing. People don't see it as a, as a proper sport anymore, as, a, you know, as a, something that you want to be seen to be supporting. The days of coming back and going, oh, yes, I went to Lingfield on a Saturday afternoon. You're likely to get stuff down the pub, like what, where that bloke was beating a horse to death to try and win or where that horse fell yeah, at the no, yeah. had to be yeah. put to sleep. That that creates an issue, and that's something that racing needs to look at as well. Um, We've got a different attitude to it in this country for some reason. No, it's, it's like if you go to Japan yeah. or Singapore, like you've been to recently, yeah. it, 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 it's looked upon as something totally brilliant. Going for a day at the races, yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. brilliant. The, the places were chocker. Nobody, no, not that I'm aware of. Nobody was screaming about a horse being abused or or anything like that. They'd gone for a good day out. They saw some good sport, and everybody went home happy. Yeah. Um, going going back historically quite some time now. When I worked mm. in office many many years ago, I was as far as everyone I was concerned, I was the only person who had any interest in horse racing because yeah. even if it, t- it turns out there are at least 20 people there who went out of bed every lunchtime. Every lunchtime they went <laughs> to the bookies. These are the days before you went online. Every yeah, lunchtime yeah. they went in the bookies and they had their 10p lucky 15s or pound lucky 15s, yeah, yeah. whatever it was they did. But no one ever told anyone about it because it was seen as something that you didn't want people to know you did. I mean, when was it they first decided that they could have glass you could look through into a betting shop? Yeah, you know, yeah. I- it always used to be blacked out windows, doors were shut, um, and the, the the chance of ever seeing a, um, a woman in a betting shop, it was unless she was working behind the counter, was nil. Well, I think obviously times have changed, but I'm not convinced attitudes have changed because people don't. No, don't, they haven't. They, don't, they still don't talk about having a bet, do they? You might as well say you took cocaine. You know, go, go down the pub and <laughs> you took some cocaine, <laughs> no, yeah. Off, yeah. and no one no one would shrug. If you went down no, and said you had a 10 on Austin, it lost, they go, oh, you've got a gambling problem. Um, yeah. It's always been yeah, seen that way. Let's go for a pint. Oh, yeah, I'll have another one. Oh, yeah, my yeah. round. You know, and nobody bats an eyelid. No. Two or three yeah. blokes falling out the pub. Oh, look at them. They've had a skin full. Ha, ha, ha. Come out of the bat and shot. Look at him. He's had the best, him. Yeah. Outrageous. Yeah. Well, we, we were talking <laughs> on, on the BHA and, and the, the much quoted figure of £1.37 a day to trigger affordability checks. Um, that's for your hobby, effectively. And, and a hobby where you could, potentially, especially if you follow the OMS, I've got that in for you, Ron, you could, actually <laughs> get, you could actually get your money back, some of your money back, or even make a profit. Well, I would love to find a golf course that will let me become a member for £1.37 a day. Yeah, I've, no I've got absolute, absolutely no chance of that at all. No, no. No. And I, personally, I lose at least a couple of golf balls around, and they cost more than £1.37, but, no, but nobody questions <laughs> that at all. No one questions it, though. That's OK. But you can't do it on betting. That's the way the world is going. I yeah. think it's a real shame. Uh, moving on, because I could talk about that rubbish forever. Um, I put about that we were doing about premiarisation, Sunday night fixtures, etc., etc. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, well, I've, you put robbing Peter to pay Paul. That's the um, phrase I've used here, yeah. Yeah, midweek meetings seem to be suffering lower prize money to pay for premier racing. Is this sustainable? Now, I thought... And I don't know where the thought came from, but I thought there was new money being put into the sport to cover premierisation. But I pointed out to you the other day that the prize money at Newcastle last week yeah. was 40% down on what it was the year before. So they yeah. could pay for a premier a premierised meeting. Yeah. What yeah. is the point? Um I ha- again, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of an outlier here. I, I'm all supportive of the BHA trying premiarisation, trying evening Sunday meetings. The money has to come from somewhere, so they're going to trial it. I don't think it's a long-running solution. If it works, fantastic. If it doesn't, so be it. But I was brought up with the old saying, as you were as well, if it isn't broken, don't fix it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, it is, well, it is broken. Oh, That's, it's well and truly bossed, yeah. This thing is yeah. broken, and it needs fixing. Now... Mm. Unless Jay Blades and the repair shop have got the answers to how they're <laughs> going to sort out racing, which I, which I think they've probably got as good an idea as anyone, um, then you've got to try something. I, I don't necessarily think this is the answer. I'll be honest with you, I don't. I, I'd like to be proved wrong. Um, yeah, but you and I die in the walls, stuck in the muds, 
um, this is the way it's always been and this is the way it should be. You know, that's the reality. Christ, I remember looking at all weather racing and going, what's that rubbish? That will never last. Now, yeah, look, yeah. Um, is it good? No. Is it better than it was? Absolutely. Is it getting better every year? Definitely, without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, yeah. Listed yeah. races, yeah. group races, class two handicaps, it's going up and up and up in the world. So us old school, like, oh, you can't do that. Well, actually, you can try it. And if it doesn't work, as long as you've got enough gumption about you to swallow your pride and go, hmm, we tried that, yeah. it didn't work, what should we try next? Then I'm 100% supportive of giving it a go. Now, it was decided after discussions with the Horseman's Group, which includes jockeys, owners, trainers, etc. So they knew this was coming. And they yeah. knew that they would be competing for lesser prize money on a Wednesday so they could fund better prize money at a weekend. Um, yeah. It's just... It is what it is, and it needs to be tried. It has attracted better fields. It has attracted better horses. Uh, the Sunday evening meeting at Chelmsford attracted a much bigger crowd than expected. Um, they're waiting for betting turnover, which unfortunately, Ron and I discussed for we can't. Unfortunately, is probably the be one end all is whether the betting turnover was up and therefore more money goes back into racing from it. But yeah. you've, I, I've got to support them for giving it a go. I know, I know you don't necessarily agree with me on this, but. They've got to try something. They couldn't sit back and leave it as it was. They had to try something. So but if, they'd, if they'd have found new money, yeah. I, I, I asked you a, a question. I've been looking for new money for 20 years, Ron. It doesn't exist. Well, no, but in, well, in that case, what you've got to do is have a call of racing and make yeah. sure that the bookmakers pay the appropriate fee for what's left. Yes. So that then you, you've got fewer races and you've still got the same number of horses. You want to get bigger fields. And I find a bigger field more attractive to have a bet on because you're going to get a better price about the horse you fancy. Whereas if you've got a four or a five runner race and a one to three favourites, yeah, you're not even going to look at it, you know. Would you? Uh, I don't know this. I don't. I don't want someone to think mm -hmm. I'm saying something I know because I don't. But it just occurred to me while that conversation was going on that maybe, just maybe, they're trying this first, and then when or if it doesn't work, they can then go back and say, look, we tried that. And then maybe there's yeah. a second thing they want to try that I don't know about, and they try that. And then the third or fourth thing is when they go, we tried everything else. We've thrown the book at it, and nothing worked. The only thing left we can do is car racing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But they need they need to be seen to not be doing that to start with, if that makes any sense. They can't just go in and it go yeah. with a massive scimitar and go, we're just cutting 15 race courses. You're gone completely. As long as, as, long as what they don't do is say, well, that didn't work. So we'll, we'll tinker with that. And we'll 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 tinker with the last two things that we've tried, and mm. just keep tinkering. Do something positive, get it the, sorted out. The, the difficulty they've got, and I, I don't stand by them, but I get to see more of what's going on, and I understand a little better um, than I did years ago. Is that, for instance, the, the evening meetings on Sunday? It's a six week, it's a six meeting trial. That's my understanding. Yeah. Now, yeah. You could argue, and I would argue, that's not enough. Six six weeks is not enough. It's, because, it's you know, a spit in the bucket. Well, it is, isn't it? If you were running your statistics on a race, you wouldn't look at the last three runnings of it to decide what weights something needed to carry or what odds were appropriate. That's not enough. You no. go for 10 years, I sometimes go for more. Even 10 years, you would say, you'd be honest and say, okay, that makes sense because the last 10 years, different trainers have come and gone, et cetera, et cetera. But you wouldn't, yeah. want, to go any less, you wouldn't want to go much less than that. So... No, well, and I it's like I say when we discuss the races, I've only yeah. got nine previous runnings of this race. You know. Yeah. So, so why would you think? Why would anyone think six trials is enough to draw yeah. a conclusion? On the other hand, if they made it sixty-six trials, they would go, "Well, that's two years worth, and it's not working. And look, you're two years behind schedule. What are we going to do now? It's too late." Yeah. Um, yeah. So they are rather caught between a rock and a hard place. They want to do the trials quickly, but. I would be very sceptical of what the answers will be. People don't expect to have a bet on a Sunday evening at the moment, do they? It's going to take time before we always oh, racing on a Sunday. I didn't know that. Because yeah. unless you, you, know, you and I are in the game, we know these things are going on. I suspect everyone who's listening to this follows racing accurately enough. They'll go, well, I knew it was happening. But, but, <laughs> but it's not us that they're aiming at. It's people who don't know racing is or haven't been racing their life. Don't have a bet on a Sunday, needing to realise that they can. Um, and I'm not sure six meetings is enough, but it's... It's a difficult one, isn't it? I have to say, it's it's a shame. Where are we up to uh, next? Well, the, the last thing on the list was to get everybody listening. Yep. And for you to tell your mates that like a bet, to write to your MP, to make sure that they attend the the meeting that is going to be held to discuss 
Mm -hmm. the, the new rules that are going to be that they're trying to force on punters. Yep. Now, you know more about it than I do. Over to you, sir. My heading for this one was nag, nag, nag. So I'll apologise for the <laughs> things that have probably been said before. If you go to the HBF web website and search around, there is a page on there where we've even put details of how to find who your MP is and the contact yep. details. And there are also details on, we've actually put it to a template letter that you can adjust accordingly. Uh, yep. The Racing Post, I'd like to point out, we did that first, by the way. The Racing Post are now doing similar uh, yep. and, all the, and all the racing guys are, are coming behind it. What people are forgetting, and it, it, I can't get any thicker than I actually am already. But um, it was pointed out to me at a meeting on Wednesday, it's not about the jobs in racing. It's, it's about entire towns disappearing off the face of the earth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you take, someone said, you take Newmarket or Lambourne or Midland as the three prime examples. What happens if racing disappears? What happens then? Oh, ghost towns. Imagine the property <laughs> values there, which are astronomical at the moment. You'd be getting them something for buttons, wouldn't you? Yeah. But it's not just it's not just the trainers and the guys who work in the yards. What about you? Know, what about the shops, the pubs, the restaurants, the news agents? There's, there's, there'd be no one there to, to frequent those places. They would all go. It's it's a massive, massive rural employer where there simply are no other jobs in those areas at this current yeah, time. Yeah. Um, I don't want to get into politics. You're talking the equivalent of, of what they used to say about mining towns back in the late 70s early 80s when the mines were shut down there's not that you can't just go oh, i'll quit that job in this regard and i'll just go and do something else there isn't something else it's uh, it's very very difficult so all we want is for the mps to turn up we'd like we like the mps to understand that the people actually care um yeah i, I won't pretend i wasn't disappointed with the length of time it took to get past 100,000 signatures on the petition which is what's called this debate in parliament um, I would have thought you would have hoped with the millions of people bet that that would have been done in about 24 hours flat. Um, but it wasn't because gamblers, straight racing fans are a fairly apathetic bunch. Um, or, or someone else will write to their MP, that'll do for me. Or I'll, I'll do it later. I'll, I won't bother. Um, I and think then, it's just people in general on this type of thing, you know, because there, there yeah. was recently I got an email about a survey that, well, a petition that people wanted me to sign because I'm now a pensioner officially. Really? Uh, um, that was. To, to sign this petition to make sure that you now get the equivalent of the, some, what, £27,000 a year, I think it was. All right. Um, the, the same as the, what would be classed as a working wage for being mm. a pensioner. And got nice. nowhere near 100,000 signatures. How many pensioners are there in Britain? Yeah, millions of them. Yeah, but they, yeah. they, they couldn't be bothered um, signing a petition to get it in. So they just discussed what they had and said, no, sorry, no, no plans to discuss it. So, no, no. Yeah. So if we were after, just get, don't even expect you to actually get your MP to turn up. We just write to your MP. We, we've yeah. done everything for you. It's an email, so you haven't got to find an envelope and a stamp. There's a template letter on the racing poster on the HBF website you can use and just amend, add your names in, add, add more onto it if you want to. Take bits yeah. out. It just, just makes it that little bit easier. Just to let them know that people actually give a monkey's about it and in, in the hope they will attend they won't know what they're talking about um i've written to my mp and offered if they want to come back to me for further information i'm happy to talk to them you could do the same or you could direct them to the racing post or you could direct them to the hbf it's entirely up to you um yeah. but they need to know it's out there otherwise we're going to be the ones wringing our hands going oh, i wish we'd done something it's all too late um <laughs> well i don't i don't want to get into politics i don't do politics i don't think sport and politics mix um, particularly well but i would say that from what i've heard when stroke if labor get in if this hasn't been done and dusted by then it may be even worse than it's looking now that's that's all i can say that's all i can say in all honesty apparently they would like the figures to be even lower that's what i'm hearing anyway um and if it's one pound 37 a day is triggering it god knows how low they want to get but still <laughs> Let's give them some winners to, while they can still get a better Yay! I think, I, I think so. Yeah. That's well, we'll try anyway. Oh, hey, by the way, you know, we, we've started this year with a mm. one point one and a few bits pence profit already. Better Should we nothing. quit? We call it quits. <laughs> Having looked at this Saturdays, I might be tempted, but carry on. <laughs> yeah. Right, first race. Yep. One thirty-two at Weatherby. God, still, it's still getting. It's still a bit strange saying these um, race times. Oh, yep. I've got no previous runnings of this race, so profiling is null and void. Sorry. I'll, I'll, produ I'll produce ratings for it tomorrow, but for podcast purposes, I'll tell you now that two trainers that had entries have a huge level stake profit in this type of race 
being run at this track. They are Ollie Murphy, mm-hmm. whose horse doesn't run. Now we have five, you've got five winners from 18 races of this type and has a 29, uh, 29 points profit. Mickey Hammond, who's had mm-hmm. a winner today, stable in form, nine mm-hmm. winners from 68 runners. He's got a profit, wait for it, 65.8 points in races of this type at this track. Wow. Now, Hammond has got a horse in here called Not What It Seems. Mm. Currently trading around about eight to one. And I'll just say, let's have a little 2080 at those odds to see if he can back up those stats. They're, that's stunning, that. Nine winners have produced 65.8 points profit. Brilliant. They see, and that, that is actually a prime example for anyone willing to rewind the podcast and suffer for a second time. Um, of what Ron was saying, if we had less racing, then you could dig deeper. Now, you probably wouldn't have oh, looked at those stats if you'd have had your 10 years. Even, no, hmm. If I'd have had stats to work with for that, I wouldn't have even looked at that. Wouldn't have no. even looked at it. There's only, so many, there's only so many hours in a day when there's three or four meetings and seven races a meeting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll start by saying that I've got some real outsiders today. This isn't one of them, I don't suppose, but it's all, <laughs> it's all a little bit strange. Uh, for Saturday. Uh, nine horse race on soft ground. I, I did try picking the races for on which look like we get more than eight runners in most. We were successful yeah, in most yeah, of them. Yeah. Uh, I've gone for Kipage, David Pipe. Only had two runs over fences, both well beaten thirds. The first I forgive because it's his first run following wind surgery and he looked like he'd improved for the run. The second, he faded badly on heavy ground, which clearly didn't suit. It's down as soft. It was good to soft when I started writing this. Um, his jumping needs to improve. Mark of 118 looks pretty workable to me. He, he looks as, you know, he should be good enough to handle a Mark of 118, that's for sure. Um, yeah. He's bound to have been well-schooled. People forget David Pipe and the facilities he's got. He's got everything there that he needs. Um, 42% strike rate as a, as a horse he's running to form, which is you know, close to as good as anybody in the race, really. I think it's got a good each-way chance, eight to one. We've got nine horses. We'll assume one pulls out, still gives us eight. So we've still got one to three. Kipage each way for me. Right, you hope. On to yes. Musselburgh. Yeah. Right, now, now, you, you've actually, I've actually started this with, you've spoiled me with the race selections this week. Oh, no, I'm um, not doing it again. This no. is a lovely, <laughs> a lovely 13 runner handicap at what is my second favourite track in the country after Newbury. Right. Um, I've only got nine previous runnings, one shy of what I really need when it comes to profiling. But I'll, I'll see what happens. Horses age five and six are basically the go-to age groups at the moment. They've won eight of those nine runnings and the last seven. And that gives me a short list of six. Your Honour, Afadil, Collingham, Park, Annonciade, Zanabad and Cuban Cigar. Mm. I'm getting nothing yet from the weight rangers. But mark a position. Now, that is absolutely screaming off the page. We've had no winning favourites yet. But seven of the nine winners have sat either second or third favourite. The two odd ones out sat fourth favourite on the tissue. So don't go looking for anything at stupid odds to win this. You're looking for a a relatively fancied horse. And I've got it down to two from the six that were in the list. We've Mm -hmm. had, as I say, no winning favourites yet. And the two I've got are Your Honour and Affidil. Now, if profiling works on this limited data, one of that pair wins this. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to dutch them. That, that's just me. That's the way I work. But for the podcast selection, I'm going to plump for that pirate that's coming over from Ireland, Your Honour. Yeah, second favourite on the tissue at the moment. And second favourites have actually won five of the nine previous renewals of this race. He's sitting in that spot around about five to one. Got to be a 2080. Your Honour for me. Your Honour. I love it because if, if, if we, we don't do this on YouTube yet, I keep nagging it Ron to do it. Oh. If you did, you'd see me grinning away as Ron's going through his stat section. <laughs> I, I just sort of stuck a line through my selection, not once, but about seven times. <laughs> but um, never mind. Sometimes, sometimes you see something, you go, do you know what? I can't ignore it because what if? Yeah, yeah. What if that, What if I'm right? Highly unlikely. Um, yeah. uh, Benson is, is a decent enough horse. He's starting at the head of the market, but 12 stones, a lot to carry around here. We haven't seen that weight carried to success in the last 10 years, so I'm going to look elsewhere. Collingham won this last year, hasn't been at his peak this season. Uh, you're going to love this one. I'm going for Sextant each way. Okay. There you go. 
Uh, Lucinda Russell, a trainer I've got a lot of time for, hasn't been seen for 869 days on the flat, 1,091 days over hurdles. I told you I've got a lot going for him. But um, <laughs> yeah, five times we've been on the flat, up to listed level. He's won at listed level on the flat. Career high mark of 105. He's run twice over hurdles, winning at Carlisle, coming home third over course and distance in February 2021. He was then a length and a half third in a Class 2 Newbury handicap on the flat in September 2021, which turns out now to be his latest outing. Um, he's racing in first-time blinkers, which is intriguing. Um, and interestingly, while I as I started writing this on Thursday, he was 40 to 1. He's now 25 to 1. Now, whether the bookies have simply adjusted their prices or someone's had a shilling each way, I'll explain that to the younger ones. That's 5p each way. Um, that could be the case. And it would be some training performance if Lucinda can get into win on the first outing for the yard. But, yeah, 105 on the flat racing here. If he's fit and ready to go off a marker 121, he could actually prove way too good for all of these. Unlikely, yeah, yeah, yeah. but again, he, he's got to he's got to be each way at twenty five to one. His his age group is wrong according yeah, to Ron. Yeah. His price is wrong according to Ron, etc. etc. And you're probably right to be fair. But having seen a horse rated that highly on the flat, which if, if this was a novice hurdle, he was having his first race over hurdles, you'd be going, oh, horse rated one hundred five. We'll get on that one. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so why not in a in a relatively? No, it's not low class, but it's not the highest class class two handicap I've ever seen. Um, I think he could go well, 25 to 1, each way sextant for me. Now we're going over to Ireland for the DRF, the Dublin Racing Festival. Oh. <laughs> now, I said earlier that you'd spoiled me with the race selections, but I'm looking at a 20, 24 runner Irish handicap, and I've got pretty much, well, I had a pretty much dumb look on my face. It might as well be a Rubik's Cube. Um, trying to solve an Irish handicap requires the look of Beelzebub inside information on yesterday's uh, racing post yep or tomorrow's racing post should i say one, <laughs> so one of them better than the other <laughs> yeah um oh it's easy I, I do watch these races but then i get back to my bread and butter to be honest with you it's, okay i've got nine previous running sitting in front of me mm -hmm. eight have been won by horses trading a single finger price which for a race like that 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 quite surprised me Hmm. But then you look further into it. Willie Mullins won it three years ago with a 40s one shot. Uh, eight <laughs> of the nine winners. Yeah, eight of the nine winners carried less than 11 stone. But when it comes to age groups, six, seven and eight, they're the ones you want to be working with. I'm going to blend all this together, see if a rabbit pops its head out the hat. I'm not going to bang a short list of 20 horses together because that's how many qualified by virtue of age, I've only got rid of four. So what I've done is I've looked at horses carrying less than 11 stone first, and I've got it down to five. Mm. Music of Tara, Black Bamboo, Stars of, Park of Kings, and Ishan. Now, are any of them trading a single figure price? Because I said earlier that that, that seems to be a positive. Nope. Now, before I go there, I've got to point out that there is one that failed by just one pound to make the cut here and mm -hmm. that's jp mcmanus's canal end trading around about five to one a beaten favorite last time out you really do have to consider that horse the shortest price runner in the five that i've listed is music of tara uh trained by de bromhead ridden by blackmore good old rachel 12 to one it is not quite hitting a single figure let's see if it's back tomorrow and for podcast purposes only, I'll say a shilling each way. We'll keep an eye on that canal end. <laughs> Would you believe a 24-runner race that we haven't discussed in advance that we've come up with the same horse? Um, <laughs> there's, there's probably more chance of bigger odds than anything else. Yeah, I've done the same as you. Nine runnings, only one winner carried more than 10-13. Uh, and that took the top 17 out of the card, if, yeah, if, that's, if that sticks. And you left us with seven to deal with. Uh, music of Tara is a daughter of favourites of my favourite sire, Cave Tara, over National Hunt. I think fantastic sire. Henry de Bromhead and Rachel Black Blackmore isn't a bad combination. Got off the market the tenth attempt over hurdles last time out here when leading on the run in over two and a half miles. She did win a point to point over three miles first time out in 2021. She's closely related to Ultima Chase winner Beware the Bear, who stays three and a quarter miles. So there's every reason to think that the step up to three miles may see her even in an even better light. 12 to 1 is an each way price again. 
Um, you want 12 to 1 the field in 24 on a handicap, really, wouldn't you? But um, <laughs> I would. that's me just being greedy. I think Music of Tara's got a fantastic each way chance if she stays upright. Yes, um, so, yeah, Music of Tara each way at 12 to 1 for me as well. I never, never saw that coming. Well, I, thought, I thought I found one you'd never find in a million years, but you did. But never mind. <laughs> okay, well, back, to, back over the sea to Sunny Sandown for the three Sunny Sandown, stunning race. Saw mm. this and was rubbing my hands together because. We've been dealing with nonsense all week, most of which shouldn't have even been taken place because the ground was so poached. The unfortunate thing is I've only got eight previous runnings to try and cobble some stats together. Age groupings, no use at all. The eight previous winners of this have been 8796, 6856. Weight ranges too, all over the shop. Everything from nine stone 11 to 11 stone seven, and that is just in the last five runnings of the race. Market position offers a little bit of hope, as whilst we had a 20 to 1 winner of this when it was run for the very first time, we've seen nothing bigger than 10 to 1 since. Uh, four of the last five winners have actually re returned a single figure price. Mm -hmm. The winner mm -hmm. has been in the front three on the tissue in the last two runnings of this, and in four of the last eight. So right now I'm looking at one of Ed Keeper, Transmission and West Balboa. Yeah. Four of the eight winners to date have carried less than 11 stone, just to revert back to the weights for a second. And only one of that trio fits the bill, and that is Transmission. You might remember that recently Joe Anderson performed Miracles, getting that home in front, about mm -hmm. a month ago now. And at around 7 to 1, I'll go 2080 Transmission. Uh, repeating a lot of what Ron said, but I've written it down, so I need to, otherwise I'll get confused. Uh, Venetia Williams won the last two runnings of this with Green Book, suggesting she knows the sort needed. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't blame anyone having a second look at Tanganyika here, though yeah. we will need a career best off this mark. Running through the past set of winners, we've not had one successful who completed and failed to come home in the first six on their last start. None bigger than 20 to 1 at the off, none older than 9, only one older than 8. And the one five-year-old, and only one five-year-old, none were without a run in the last sixty days. Only one was rated higher than one three four, and all bar one came from the top six in the market. Now, using Ron's um, terminology, sticking those in the mixer and seeing what comes out the other end, and offering up a prayer personally for this race, we ended up with a short list of three. I've got Saint Davy, Transmission, and Skamalak Liath, and it's the last name that I would be punting each way. Beating the head last time out over this trip at Ascot in a novice handicap. Seven-year-old stays well, won't be crying off close home. Um, though I have added, if anyone thinks this was an easy race to even try to solve, you need your head examined. Um, <laughs> it, it, it wasn't a race I, I took to, um, hence reverting back to stats, which is usually Ron's area of expertise, not mine. Um, but on this occasion, I used it because I didn't have a clue otherwise. So Skamalak Liath, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, probably not. Each way for me, currently trading at eight to one. There you yeah, go. I've got now, seen I'm trying to spell it. <laughs> yeah. I'm wondering, we might find, we might think we might find the real the next one. This was the one where I got it wrong. I, just, I chose some uh, decent sized fields and looked for some decent races as well. And uh, by the time we wrote the list, we've ended up with a four runner race for the 335. Yeah, it it yeah, just. It Who do you think is going to win this one, Ron? Well, <laughs> to say in inverted brackets, the bleeding obvious. Yep. Uh, Gallop the Champs, you would expect to win it, is officially rated, what, about £10 higher than fast or slow? £12 higher yep. than fast or slow. But I found a fan club earlier this year after I suggested that fast or slow was much better than we'd seen when he was beaten the neck by Corak Rambler at Cheltenham at the Cheltenham Festival, mm -hmm. giving the winner £4. Yeah, and true. a few took the hint. They backed at huge double-figure prices when it ran next time out. And he beat the Gold Cup winner at Punchestown. Galloping the Shops was second, I believe. Yep. He returned 20 to 1 that, that day, but he was much bigger in the morning. He proved that was no, flu, no fluke on season, seasonal debut this year. He beat Galloping the Shops into third place. And he now leads 2-0 on head-to-head -head stats. Galloping the Shops is 2-5 to five tomorrow. Fast or slow is 3-1. to one. And the last, the last name, the first name, rather, has been a beaten favourite when against fast or slow at 4 to 11 and 1 to 2. Hmm. 
I know the favourite, as I say, is officially £12 a better horse. But the form book says, fast or slow is, he's beaten this horse twice. I, I, it's a race I've never had a better in my life. But I've got to stick with fast or slow until the other one beats him. I'm putting up fast or slow. Good for you, actually. I don't, I don't blame you at all. And it makes you wonder how the handicapper has him £12 superior when he's been beaten twice. Um, but I know. It does make you question that. Um, I put this down, zero chance anyone will see this as a race to have a bet in. Opportunity yep. to see the likely Gold Cup winner, um, according to the odds anyway, uh, running one more time and winning one more time before he heads off to Cheltenham. He didn't jump very well last time when he was beaten by fast or slow. To be fair, he was a bit sluggish at his fences. Um, and you, you cannot afford to do that over three miles over chases, that's for sure. So if he does that kind of jumping again, then, then I'm with you. I can understand exactly where you're coming from. Um, yeah. but, but I don't see that happening. Um, he's odds on for a reason. Uh, I, I suspect he may have needed it more. His, his target is clearly Cheltenham. Well, here and then Cheltenham will be his targets for the season. So I would be surprised if he's beaten. Will I be betting on him at two to five? No, I will not. No, I shall, not especially I not given it. those stats. No, well, I shall watch it, wait to see what we're talking about for Cheltenham. Because if he, if he wins yeah. narrowly or doesn't win, then all of a sudden we're looking for a different winner of the Gold Cup, aren't we? Potentially. We are. Yeah. But that's, that, there's nothing much more to say about that race, to be honest with you. It's just one of those oh. races that, that popped up. One to go. And I've actually noticed with my notes that my notes are getting less and less as I go down. Down, I must have got bored. Um, <laughs> 3, 3.45 at Sandown, which I believe is our last one. It is. Now, I've got one I can get stuck right into. I know it's cut up to 10 runners, hmm. but at least I've got stats and trends to play around with. First, age groupings. Yep. Stick with horses age seven. They've won three or eight. They've won four. Uh, uh, well, they've won seven of the last ten between them. And they've also won the last four runnings of this race. So I've got a list of three to kick off straight away. Bangers and Cash, Grozny, Dom of Mary. Hmm. Now, I can dutch that trio for the profit. And that's me sorted. If, if I opt to follow profiling as opposed to my ratings and oms tomorrow, this race will be rated. Oh, good. The last three and six of the last 10 winners of this all carried more than 11 stone and they all fit. And they're all eight year olds, too, which have won the last two, uh, two of the last three runnings of this race. Uh, so I'm looking at the markers. It's been a tad strange in recent years. The last two winners returning a double figure SP. The previous eight, though, returned no bigger than nine to one and with six of them seven to one or shorter. So at this point, I'm going to drop Grosley because he's trading around about 11 to 1 at the moment. Although I have to say, he has been backed. So I'm going to work with either Bangers and Cash or Don of Mary. Hmm. I'm plumping for Don of Mary. Now, the simple reason being, it's 11 stone 2 versus 11 stone 8. 11 stone 2 being carried by Don of Mary. And only one horse in the last decade has carried more than 11 stone 7 to victory here. And bangers in cash is carrying 11 stone eight. One, mm. Only one pound in excess, but it's one pound in excess. Yep. I'm going with Dom of Mary off 11 stone two. Yeah, well, yeah, Blackjack Magic's heading the market at the moment, seven to two. If he jumps better, then uh, he's going to be a, a force to reckon with here. He didn't jump very well last time at, at all. Um, I'm going to be back in Kestrel Valley. Each way, Sam Twist and Davis, Nigel Twist and Davis, 15 to 2. That's good enough to go each way for me. I'm quite happy with that. Uh, first, fourth and first so far this year. The fourth, um, no offence to the young jockey, James Turner. He went away too fast that day um, at Hereford and, and, and faded late on, which was no massive surprise to anybody. So before that, one easily at Hereford. Follow that with a 20-length romp at Ludlow. Gets an added £7 from the handicapper. I don't see that as being enough to stop another big run here. Sam riding for his dad is never a bad thing. I am very wary about Jack Magic. If he thinks he's jumping out, I think he is the likeliest winner. But that, that's is that built into his price at 72? I'm not convinced it is, personally. Mm -hmm. um, so I will stick with Kestrel Valley each way. Not a race I am overly strong on. But I, I think she's got a good chance of getting in the first three. And, and, and that will do. I'll be happy with that. Yeah, any, any place bet standard this week will be great. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, I'll take most of mine are big enough prices. That I'll take a couple of places out of them and, and, and be laughing. It's just it's just one of those weeks. Ron's very happy with those as you've worked out over the years. 
Ron likes going through his handicaps, and I prefer I prefer novice events and, and wait for age yeah. and things like that. But uh, that's how it works. Two different people doing it. So that's our horses done for the week. Are you ready to press your button, sir? I press my button, sir. <laughs> Well, we've had a bit of a hiatus, so I've got plenty of arms to work with, but I picked out three that really did. I, I, I love them. I love them. Mm. In three is Epsom Faithful, who's actually won a game this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. It was 10 to 1 into 11 to 2 in the newsletter, won at 13 to 2. <laughs> Two, Grant Wood, sixteen to one into twelve to one in the newsletter. Only went one at twenty to one. <laughs> but my favourite, a horse called Pocklington. Hmm. He was twenty to one into twelve to one in the newsletter, and he's one at eight to one. Oh. Now the reason I liked the look of this one was I'd spotted it the night before, and I over. The, well, the last three or four months, I've been watching um, Bond, Oldroyd, and Harris, is it? When mm. they get together, team up. Yeah. And um, whenever they have one on the all weather, especially a juvenile, watch for it being punted. I, I, I watched, I saw this open at 20 to 1, I thought, going to keep an eye on that. By, well, about 45 minutes later, it's 12 to 1. So I went in. I thought, I'm not missing 12 to 1. Each way bet, 2080, whatever you want to call it, I was on. One easy at eight to one. And I'm thinking to myself, that is something you've really got to put in your trackers. Not a yeah. horse, the trainer, jockey, owner combination. It's pulling up trees. And here we go. Again. Yeah, I really did like the look of that one. Stuck out like a sore thumb. I think, you know, it's. Ron and I, I, I don't like these on the ceiling, as Ron knows, because I quite, I'm still one of those who likes to sit and go through the form book uh, with, with yep. the naive, naivety that that will help me find the winners. Um, clearly, it's not as effective as the OMS are, so what can you say? It's, it, if money's down and it's making people a profit, best of luck to you, but it's, it's frightening. Yeah, yeah. That, that That's the only way uh, owners and that can make it pay these days. That's a story for another day. Um, yeah. Something for the weekend to round off with, sir. Yeah, I'm going to put up a little each way double, Transmission and Dom of Mary. I think they should both hit the frame, if nothing else. Uh, I'm just going a straight each way bet music of Tara. Three o'clock Leopardstown. Shoot, oh, shoot right. me now. Who, whoever thought they'd see, they'd see, <laughs> me, see me tipping up something in a 24 runner Irish handicap. That's probably a first. <laughs> but uh, the, the that world is a stress. <laughs> Yeah, the world is a strange place, as you can tell. Yeah, yeah what, what do you want to say? I don't know. It's just how it is. Okay. It is. Um, anything else we need to add for this week? Uh, no, we've already done one hour, three minutes and 15 seconds. Well, they must be bored by now, so we'll let them go, shall we? <laughs> oh, it must be asleep. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. So we're, 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 we're getting closer to Cheltenham now, and I should yeah. imagine over the next few weekends... The, um, the, the racing won't be exactly sparkling, but we'll do our best with it. Yeah, we'll try our best. If there's something worth doing in a podcast, we'll do it. If there isn't, we'll give you we'll give you all a miss and we'll have a weekend off. Um, yeah. Whatever. T- tell your friends, share the podcast. I don't have no idea how you do that. I'm t- technologically ignorant. But um, <laughs> share the podcast, tell your friends, the more listen, the merrier. And yeah. uh, we'll go from there. Don't forget to sign up to Ron's uh, post racing. How do they do that, Ron? Oh, they do, well, they just go to www.postracing.co.uk, click on the subscribe button, loads of options, weekend only, um, specials, it's Cheltenham.com, which is an absolute gold mine. Wait till that's finished. Um, there's just loads of options, loads of stuff to be doing, and you, you won't find anything better for less or for more. I don't disagree, oh, but then I wouldn't, would I? So, yeah, fair enough. Okay, <laughs> well, in that case... We better be polite and say have a good weekend, everybody. Let the sun shine yeah. wherever you are, and may all your bets be winning ones. Yeah, and take care of yourselves. Yeah, over and out. Take care now. Bye bye. See you later. Bye bye. Post racing, the site for winners.